Hello, welcome to another Coding Rainbow video. And in this video, I want to look at how you can actually use all that stuff about regular expressions in your JavaScript program. Perhaps with P5.js or not with P5.js, but I'm going to use it with P5.js, but this is really general. JavaScript plus regular expressions. Okay, let me come over here for a second. So strings are probably something familiar to you in JavaScript. You could write, create a string like this, var s equals hello. Now, as I started with regular expressions, and hopefully you can read this, this can also be a regular expression, right? This sequence of characters match the literal string hello. But JavaScript does not consider this a regular expression because it's between two quotes. If it's between two quotes, it is a string object. If I want it to be a regular expression, I can say var r equals forward slash hello. So this is now the regular expression hello. This is the string hello. And just also in the same way that you can say new string, you can also say new reg exp and put the regular expression in quotes as a string. So for example, if you ever wanted to build a web application where you take string input from a user and make it into a regular expression, you would have to do it this way. And in fact, if you look at the examples linked in the A to Z GitHub repository, I do exactly this in one of the examples. But for the most part, I can create regular expressions like this. So then the question becomes, once you have, in the same way that a string object, you can say things like s dot index of, right? These are functions that you call on a string or properties like s dot length. A regular expression has those things as well. And two that I'm going to show you uh, in this particular, actually in this particular video I'm going to show you one. I'm going to get to another one. I'm going to show you uh, later. I'm going to show you r dot test. So this is a function that you can call on a regular expression. And then I'm also actually going to show you a function that you could call on a string, s dot match, but you pass in a regular expression. So this is one thing you have to get used to in JavaScript. There are times when you want to say the regular expression dot the function with a string. And sometimes you want to say the string dot a function with a regular expression. And in fact, this might be more common. Use matches I use very commonly. Split and replace are functions that I'm going to show you, which are all functions that you call on a string that expect a regular expression as an argument. But I'll get through all that as I make this video end future videos. OK, so let's start with test. So I'm going to come back over here. And you can see I have a list of these here in my notes that I'm following along. But I'm going to switch over. Just I'm actually just going to switch to the browser, which I'm in the browser already. And I just want to do some stuff in the console just to test how regular expressions work. So here we go. <laughs> I'm going to create a regular expression, var r equals uh, three, uh, whoops, backslash d, three digits in a row. So there you can see, I made that regular expression. It is three digits in a row. The forward slash is indicating it's a regular expression, not a string. So I can say r.test hello and false, because hello does not match that regular expression. I can say r.test123, and I am going to get two, true, because that is three digits in a row. Now, let's ask the question 123 abc. What am I going to get? Also true, right? Because that regular expression is found within the string. So notice that test is just searching for that regular expression anywhere in the string. Let's say you want to use regular expressions to validate a full string. Well, a trick to this is that I could change my regular expression. And I'm going to just do this right here again. I'm going to change my regular expression to say the beginning of the string followed by three digits, followed by the end of the string. So if I use those position meta characters, beginning and end, now if I say r.test123, I get true. But if I say, whoops, r.test123, a, b, c, easy as 4, 5, 6, that's not the words. Um, you'll say I get false. Because that regular expression with beginning followed by three digits followed by n does not match. So this is something you can play with just to experiment with regular expressions. Um, what I would like to do in the code right here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this right here in the code. So let's say I wanted to do some sort of validator to say I've put in a valid email address. So I'm going to go to the program and oh my sketch. And I, I've already put in a lot of code from a previous example where basically the string I get is the value of that text field. 
So now I'm going to say I have a regular expression, which is uh, any number of word characters followed by an at. Uh, where's an at? <laughs> at followed by uh, any number of word characters. Uh, followed by a literal dot, followed by uh, net or com or org, right? So this is my regular expression, and then I want to say, I'm going to just say create p, the regular expression, test it against that string. So I'm just going to, on the screen, say true or false, whether it's a valid email or not. And, you know, I should, I should probably test this regular expression out in the atom editor or some other form just to see before it works, but I'm gonna guess that it's about right. So I'm gonna now go to my code and I'm gonna hit submit. Rainbows and unicorns is not a valid email address, but rainbow at unicorns.com is a valid uh, email address. And uh, I, I think, by the way, it got true twice because I have both, I have two events. I have the, why did that happen twice? Let me just see here again. That only happened once. Rainbow at unicorns.com. I wonder why that's happening. Why is that event happening twice? Um, changed. Oh, oh, because I have both the changed event and mouse pressed. So the changed event is like I tab out of the uh, out of the text field. Uh, so that event got. So if I I I might want to comment that out, just to uh, uh, unicorn unicorns at rainbow.com. Uh, submit, true. So you can see this is how I could use a regular expression in a piece of JavaScript code. Hooray! Okay, ah, now let's go back to over here and I want to look instead now at string match regular expression and see what we get with this particular function. This is kind of interesting. Okay, so now over here, let's, let's see if I can work this out. I want to make a string. Ooh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Var s equals when in doubt, unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. Hopefully vegan, nut-free. No, not nut-free. I like nuts. I'm not allergic to nuts. Maybe just vegan. I don't know, whatever. I don't like da uh, dairies. I have a problem with whatever. That's really not relevant to programming videos, right? <laughs> OK, unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes, plus no sugar. It's not very good for me. OK, anyway, um, so that's my string. <laughs> that's really not going to be a good. You know what? You should all enjoy a buttery, delicious, frosting full, strawberry flavored, Delicious cupcake. Please enjoy that if that's the kind of thing you like in your day today. Okay, um, so that's the string. Um, now I'm going to uh, make a regular expression where I'm going to say uh, unicorn is my regular expression. Because I'm going to say s dot match r. So the match function, unlike test, where I say r dot test s, right? Um, I'm going to do that really quickly. I say r.test s is true. What happens if I say s.match r? So this is actually quite a bit more useful because what does it give me? It gives me the actual thing that was matched. For example, let me, um, let me change r. Oops. Let me uh, change r to be a regular expression that is uh, backslash w plus. Oops. Uh, R is a regular expression backslash W plus. And now let me say S dot match R. Huh, I still just got unicorns. So why did I still just get unicorns? Well, in fact, what is S? Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. I got the first match only of backslash W plus. This brings up a really, really key and important aspect. I don't know, let's try, let's try purple of programming with regular expressions. And that is this idea of flags. Flags are a way of modifying the behavior of a regular expression. And there are two flags that I'm going to tell you about. And I think there's another one and maybe another one, but two that are going to be relevant to these videos. G, standing for global. And what that means is don't just match the first thing, match all of them. And uh, uh, I for case insensitive, okay? G for global, I for case insensitive. So let's look at how it works with those flags. I'm gonna come back over here and I am going to clear this out and I'm gonna say var r equals uh, a dash z <laughs> uh, plus forward slash g. So notice the flag 
goes after the regular expression. The regular expression is in between the, the, the slashes, and the flag goes after the regular expression. So if this regular expression is now global, and I now say s.matchr, what will I get? I get an array with every single match of that regular expression. Oh, goody. <laughs> Excellent. Yay, OK, I got a match with unicorns and rainbows. So this is a really easy, quick way to just grab a whole bunch of things. So you know, as an exercise, do the phone number thing and grab all the phone numbers and have them into an array. Now, let's, let's, um, let's do something with that text. Let's, uh, let's capitalize some stuff. Whoops. Let me capitalize unicorns with a U and, ah, oh my god. Cupcake, I'm just going to do this. Let me capitalize these two letters. And the cupcake. So let's look now at the case sensitivity flag. So let's say I do G. OK, so let's say I just do this again. I have the same. Now let me do this again. S dot match R. Notice, whoa, OK. <laughs> I got upcakes. What's an upcake? <laughs> and nd, nd upcakes. Um, so of course I forgot about the whole word boundary thing. So you know I could be a little bit more thoughtful here. And I could change this to have a word boundary followed by a word boundary, right? And now I can do this again. I just got unicorns and and rainbows, right? I did not get and with a capital A or C uh, because I'm only looking for lowercase letters. So what I could do is I could add another flag, I. So if you want multiple flags, you can see that right there, one flag followed by another flag. So if I have both of those flags, and I do this match one more time. Um, if I do this match one more time, now I've matched everything. So you can see here how the flags work. I need a global flag to, do, to match the regular expression multiple times in the string, and the I flag for case, instance, in case sensitivity. Now, I could add this. I should probably add this stuff into the code, but I'm probably going to save this for doing like a coding challenge a little bit later. I think just working in the console is kind of useful here. And as an exercise, you might take this example that I'll post and run the match and kind of display what it matches down here. Maybe I should add that in. But let me go a little bit further before I do that. Because let's think about the phone numbers for a second. OK? So let me, uh, let me revise the code for a little bit. I'm going to go to that phone numbers example. I wish I had something more creative, but it's kind of a useful example. So I'm going to go to the HTML file, and I'm going to say uh, here. And I'm going to make a simpler phone number. Here are two uh, like numbers, 111-222 um, uh, and 3444-2. Three, Five 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 five. Okay, so I'm just going to use these two phone numbers. So you can see, and of course, in this example, I can mess around and type other stuff to play with it. But that's what's going to appear there by default. And then when I hit the submit button, what I want to do is say matches equals s dot match what a regular expression. So I'm going to write a regular expression which is let me think about this. OK. Uh, three digits followed by a dash or a dot followed by uh, four digits. OK? So this is my regular expression. Three digits followed by a dash or a dot. And I want to call the match function with this string and that regular expression. And that's going to give me the array of matches. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to write a little loop that says for everything, uh, everything matched, uh, create a paragraph with what it matched. Right. So this is kind of a pattern here, which create a regular expression, match that regular expression in a string, and then loop through and display all the things that it matched. So if I run this now, I'm going to see this. Now, I only saw the first one. Why do I only see the first one? Because I forgot the global flag. So if I add the global flag in the code and run it again, I can now see I've matched both of those things. And I could add another one and you know 222-5556. And I could hit submit. And now I see all three of those. OK, now here's a question, though. What about those groups? What if I want to capture particular groups? 
<laughs> you might be asking. Are you asking? I don't know. I'm asking it. So let me add a capturing group. For example, I want to capture the first three digits. How do I have access to that? So let me go and refresh this page. Now one thing I can do is I can just uh, mess around with this in the console. So you can see the console I now have in the variable s, I have those things. Now, um, let me get this regular expression. So I have that regular expression now, and I can say, look at this, s.match r. Where are the groups? They're not there. Let me do something again. Let me take out that global flag. I'm going to take out that global flag. Now I'm going to say s.matchr again. Look now. Now the group is there. Notice how this is group 0, the full match, followed by group 1. So if you are not using the global flag, the match function will give you the groups as an array. If you are using the global flag, you need to actually write the code in a different way and use a function called exec. And I'm going to leave that for a separate video. I'm going to show you how to loop through and capture groups with the exec function. And I'm just going to do that in a separate video. And that'll be exactly the next video that you can watch right after that one if you want. But here I've shown you some basic ideas for how to take text and match stuff with a regular expression. And you can hopefully come up with some more creative ideas of how to do that. OK. Um, Goodbye. <laughs>